Good morning. Day one on the Cohos Trail. I left the uh, Canadian border about a half hour ago. Um, I'm on Sophie's Lane now, heading south. Planning on through hiking the Coas Trail. And I want to get to Neil Tillotson Shelter tonight, which is about a 17 mile walk. Um, started with the walk around Fourth Connecticut Lake. My wife, Judy, drove up with me yesterday and then we drove to the border. She and I hiked around the lake and then she made the long drive home to Massachusetts. Anyway, so now I'm in Sophie's Lane. It's easy walking here, but the section I just got off of was weeds up to my waist all the time and up over my shoulders sometimes. Already had some pretty pretty good wildlife sightings the first few miles of the trail. Uh, in fact, first wildlife sightings were on the road on the way up here. So a lot of turkeys, that's no big deal. We see those at home all the time in Massachusetts too. We also saw a bear, a little bear cub in the middle of the road. When it saw us coming, it turned and ran into the woods. That was pretty cool. Um, and then just now, a big deer just ran right across the trail here in front of me into the woods. So hopefully there's some more wildlife, uh, hopefully some moose, but from a uh, safe distance, we'll see. on the falls in the river trail coming up to the falls in maybe a mile it's right next to the Connecticut River which normally is basically like a mountain stream but with all the rain we've had it is just raging unbelievable and I expect the falls to be the same. Good morning. Day two, July 20th. Got a late start this morning. It was, uh, it's almost nine o'clock. And I started about 20 minutes ago. Heading to Lake Francis today, I hope. Yesterday was absolutely exhausting. It was over 18 miles. And I didn't get to the shelter until about seven o'clock. Um, there were two other people there. They were also going southbound on the Cohas Trail, but they had started at Deer Mountain Campground, so they had a much shorter day than me. Um, but worked out okay. Slept pretty well. It was foggy when I woke up, but that burned off pretty quickly. And it's really getting to be a nice day. I know I hit Prospect Mountain. I think there's nice views there over the lake. And Young Store will be a highlight today, too, because I can get a nice sandwich for lunch there. That's about seven miles in, so I hope to get there around one o'clock or so.
Okay, it's about 1.30 on day two. Taking a break here on top of Prospect Mountain. It's got a really nice view over First Connecticut Lake to McGalloway Mountain. But man, that section of trail I just did was tough. It's not that the climbs were tough. It was just um, a lot of muddy sections, tough to get through. I lost the trail twice. Had to backtrack, tried to bushwhack back to the trail. That wasn't a good idea. I did eventually find it, thank God, for the events at Digital Map. And the blowdowns, there were some huge blowdowns that it's just really difficult. You can't get over them. You have to go around them, and it's just tough. Um, so uh, it took longer than I thought. I thought I'd be at Young's store by about 1. It's 1.30. I've got about a mile to go, so I should get there by about 2. Grab a sandwich, something cold to drink. It's kind of a hot day. So here's the view from Prospect Mountain. Starting over here to the to the south, there's uh, First Connecticut Lake and McGalloway Mountain and back. Really beautiful. Yeah, nice spot for a break. And now I'm going to head down to Young's store. So I ended up getting to Young's store a little bit later than I thought. It was about 2.30. It wasn't a mile from Prospect Mountain. It was almost two miles from Prospect Mountain. But I got a sandwich there, and I ran into a hiker who I had met earlier. Um, and there's a campground right across the street from Young's store called Mountain View, and she had already rented a site here. And I'm going to split the site with her and stay, stay here at Mountain View, which works out great because they have free showers. And I took a shower. It feels great. Clean some clothes, and it's a nice spot. I set up my tent right here. I think this is going to work out well for the night. Good morning, day three. Nice early start this morning. I left Mountain View Campground at about 6.15. I'm on uh, River Road. You know, I normally don't like road walks when I'm hiking, but on this trail, I kind of welcome them. It's, it's so much easier walking, uh, mainly because of the condition of the trail. There are so many areas where the mud is just mud and water deep. You have to find a way around it. Also, some of these huge blowdowns across the trail that are impossible to climb over. And you have to find your way around those too. So it takes a lot longer. You look at the miles and you say, oh, I can do that in X amount of time. But it takes you an extra hour or two because of all those obstacles. I've got about another half mile on this. You get to Lake Francis. I'm hopeful to get to Panorama Shelter today, but that's a long day, and I don't know if I'll make it. If not, I'll stop at Coleman State Park. Um, and it is supposed to rain later, so that should be fun. Hello again, I'm on the Lake Francis Trail now. I can hear the river off to my right. And some mud, but it hasn't been too bad so far. I, I hear the southern end of the trail is, is worse, so we'll see. It's about uh, almost 10 o'clock, approaching Nilsson's Leg, the new segment of the trail. And it um, started to rain a little while ago, so hey, I got out my poncho. I was going with a poncho on this trip, first time I've done that. Still raining in the woods now, using the poncho. I think it's, I think it's good. The rain jackets just get too hot and sweaty in them. I hate wearing them. I did bring one. And I'm going to use it for warmth if I need it. I haven't needed it yet. All right, it's about 12.30, and I'm coming up on Coleman State Park. So I've walked, I believe, over 15 miles. That's Little Diamond Pond in the background out there. Uh, Nilsson's Leg was nice. That's a new section this year, named after Kim Nilsson, the founder of the Cobos Trail. Um, I can't believe how many I mean, moose droppings I saw on that trail, and moose tracks all over the place. Didn't see any moose, but I know they use that trail. Um, I did see something that I think might have been a bobcat. I'm not sure. It scurried out into the underbrush across the trail. This is Coleman State Park. I just arrived. All 
I'm on the Tumble Dick Mountain Trail. And it kind of looks like this. There'd be nice views over there if the weather would cooperate. This is what the trail looks like in here. That's the trail, believe it or not. Now, this is up to my waist, but back a ways a little bit, it was up over my head. And quite a bit of the Cohos Trail in this northern, these northern sections are like that. Uh, fortunately, it's well marked for the most part. Here's a yellow blaze on this tree right here. Otherwise, you'd question yourself and say, am I still on the trail? Um, thankfully, I have the, the Avenza digital map. And it's very reassuring to see that little blue dot that shows you where you are on the trail. Here's a little bit better section of the Tumble Dick Trail. More like a regular hiking trail. Very muddy, of course, from all the rain, but at least you can see the footway. But those sections don't last that long. And here comes another overgrown section. morning. Day four. I just left Panorama Shelter. Arrived there last night at about 5.30 and Strava said that was a 23.3 mile day. That was tough. Very tough. And the last climb up to the shelter was really, is really tough. Um, there were two other people in the shelter. They were from Georgia. They came all the way up here to hike in the New Hampshire mud and they they said they're enjoying the trail. Uh, as you can probably see, it's not a beautiful day. I wanted to have a nice day today because I'm going through Dixville Notch, which is really just a beautiful area. I, what happened last night, starting about 9 30, 10 o'clock, it rained harder than I've ever heard it rain for maybe two hours at least. And then it rained off and on the rest of the night. Um, so I'm kind of concerned about the condition of the trails. I've got three miles to the north side of Dixville Notch. It'd be nice if it cleared up a little bit and get some views down into the notch there, but we'll see. I'm on the north side of Dixville Notch. Pretty cool place, great view here. I have to go down to the road, which is right down here. It's a huge drop off this rock and I'm kind of afraid to go out any further. I'm climbing up on the south side of Dixville Notch. There are beautiful waterfalls down below. That's Table Rock right out there. And I'm going to head out there in a minute. Okay, I'm walking out to Table Rock now. That's the old Balsams Resort. Unfortunately, it started raining again. It was beautiful when I was down at the Cascades. Sunny, beautiful. Now it's raining again. Walking out now on Table Rock, and this is what the drop looks like. i to be really careful here. And I don't really trust these shoes, they're slippery. This reminds me a little bit of the Angel's Landing, the top part of Angel's Landing in Utah at Zion National Park. This drop off here. We'll see how far out I can get. If you're afraid of heights, I would not recommend this. But it's really a spectacular spot. Don't want to take a wrong step. I'm going to go out to the end. The 
rocks are all wet from the rain. It makes me nervous. That's about, I think, as far as I want to go. Right up here. Right up here. And that's the look straight down into Dixville Notch. What a place. Morning. I just left the bald head shelter. It's about 8.15 or so. Um, I got there last night around 5.30. It started to rain as soon as I got there, but it didn't last long. It's a beautiful day today. Bright sunshine. Forest looks great. It looks beautiful. I'm on the Gadwa Notch Trail. Planning to go to the old hermit shelter. I think it's 10 or 11 miles, so not a killer of a day. So I'll check in a little bit later. I'm getting ready to leave the Old Hermit Shelter. And what a beautiful shelter it is. It's just, this is built to last. Look at these beams. Um, about eight o'clock, looks like it's gonna be another nice day. Just finishing up a couple of chores, filtering some water, um, and be getting on the trail in just a couple of minutes. So uh, this'll be the second day in the Nash Stream Forest. Yesterday was beautiful, so um, Hoping for the same today. Morning again. I'm about a mile, mile and a half into the hike. I did a short climb up. And then it's been mostly downhill. And then I reached this uh, forest road, which I'm walking on now. Easy walking, nice road. Uh, one thing I'm happy to report about is that for the first time on this hike, today I have dry shoes, dry socks, and dry feet. It's taken six days, but dry feet now. Uh, when I took that two-hour break yesterday on that little bridge in the sun, I spread out my socks and my shoes, and uh, they dried out almost completely. And then overnight, they could dry it out the rest of the way, so it feels great. And the pack is really light now, because I've eaten through almost all my food. I only have one night left before I resupply. So, it feels great. Um, Nash Stream Forest is, is just beautiful. I mean, it's, it's worth just coming in to hike this section, even if you don't want to do the whole trail. I'm going to Devil's Rest Shelter tonight.
coming down from Victor Head, I took the uh, side trails to North Percy Peak, South Percy Peak, and just now Victor Head. And all of them are steep and exhausting. But I don't know if I'll ever be back up here again in this area, so I wanted to do them all. Glad I did, especially North Percy Peak. It's pretty cool. The last um, quarter mile is basically a friction climb up these really steep slabs of rock that I would not want to climb if they were wet. But fortunately they were not wet today and my shoes had much better grip than I expected. So it was actually a good climb. South Percy Peak had a great view back over to North Percy Peak and you can really see the rock slabs. Um, and then Victor Head, it has like an obstructed view over to the both Percy Peaks. You get a nice view of the Percy Peaks from up there. I'm absolutely beat now. Uh, I think I've got just about a mile to the uh, Devil's Rest uh, Shelter, so that's not bad. And I believe it's mostly downhill, but not steeply downhill. So it should be there in maybe a half hour or so. morning. It's a little before 8 and I just left the Devil's Rest Shelter. I had the shelter to myself last night which was great and uh, there were so many hermit thrushes singing throughout the early evening and then later on at night I could hear Lots of loon calls in the distance. I think there must be loons on Christine Lake, which is a couple of miles away down in the valley. It was great though, I love those calls. It did rain, which surprised me. Shortly after I got to the shelter, the winds picked up and it started raining. And it rained intermittently throughout the night. Uh, but I didn't really mind that. It was, I like the sound of the rain as long as it's not heavy like it was back at Panorama Shelter. And it wasn't. So that was nice. And it's beautiful again today, so can't complain about the rain. Um, I've got a short day today. I'm staying at the Stock Village Inn tonight. And that's good because yesterday was tough. This driver said it was 12.4 miles, which isn't a huge amount of mileage, but it was rugged. And I, I did all three side trails, so that really added to the uh, elevation gain. Those, all three of those are steep. So I was pretty tired. Uh, it'll be nice to go to the inn I stayed there the night before I started this hike and um, Nancy makes a tremendous breakfast in the morning so looking forward to that looking forward to taking a shower sleeping in a bed so should be a good day all right I'm doing the road walk to Stock Village Inn now, it's about 12. Um, but I'm going a different way than I thought. I got to Route 110, which the most direct way to go to Stock Village Inn is just take a right and go 110 west for three miles. But I backtracked about six tenths of a mile to the north, and I'm going down Percy Road and Northside Road instead. I came to Percy Lodge. And I, I knew about Percy Lodge, and they have a store there. But the store is only open Wednesday through Sunday. And today's Tuesday. So I didn't think I'd be able to go in there and get anything. But I walked in anyway. The store was locked. The lodge was open, so I walked in. 
and a woman came out and she was extremely nice and I asked her if can I buy something in the store she said oh yeah sure absolutely so we went in there and they had Arnold Palmer's and I bought two of them and a nice tea with lemon and a vitamin water orange so that was awesome and a bag of potato chips um, and I met I didn't get the woman's name I met her husband Kevin they own the place and the nicest people absolute nicest people they love hikers um, and then I took a little detour to Christine Lake which is maybe I don't know three tenths of a mile walk from the road it's all uphill but it was so worth it it's a beautiful lake um, I saw five loons there and they started calling out and the water was so nice I went for a swim uh, also there's a really nice waterfall and set of cascades on the road up to Christine Lake so it's just a great place to stop so I, I think I probably have about a mile left to the Stock Village Inn. Good morning. Had a great stay last night at the Stock Village Inn. Nancy cooked a tremendous breakfast this morning. Scrambled eggs with cheese, bacon, homemade biscuits, fresh fruit, orange juice. Just great. Um, if you're thinking of doing the Kohas, the inn falls at about the halfway point. And I highly recommend it. It's, a, uh, it's an old 1850s rambling old house. And Nancy's a tremendous host. Mike too, Nancy and Mike. And she gave me a ride back to the trailhead this morning, so that was great. Uh, that first section I just did, I've gone about two and a half miles. That first section through the woods was muddy and wet, like the northern sections. My feet are already soaked again. Um, and I got about a million mosquito bites. It's unbelievable. Uh, I'm now at South Pond Recreation Area. It's a big pond that's over that way. They call it a pond, but it's a... It's a big lake, actually, um, and it's, it's a nice spot. So I'm going to continue down the trail in a few minutes. My plan was to stop at Unknown Pond campsite today, and that's probably what I'll do. I, think, I guess if I'm really motivated, I could continue up to Mount Cabot and camp up there, but that adds a lot of elevation gain. I think to Unknown Pond, it's, it's 3,000 feet of elevation gain. Um, so it would add a lot more to go to Mount Cabot. So I'll see how I feel when I get to Unknown Pond. I took the side trail into Devil's Hop Yard. I'm in here now, partway through. Uh, it's a rocky, slippery, tricky walk. Um, you can hear the stream running underneath the rocks, but you can't see it where I am right now. I'm going to continue up. Okay, I'm up at Rogers Ledge on the Kilkenny Ridge Trail, which is supposed to have really nice views, but not today, unfortunately. It's just too hazy. You really can't see much. I can see the, I can barely see the outlines of the distant ridges. I think it's the presidentials, but you're not going to see them today. Um, be worth coming back here. I also see that there are some really nice campsites up here. You'd have to bring water up to camp at one of these spots where people have obviously camped before. And it would be a great spot to camp. You'd be right on the edge here. And if the air is clear, you'd just have beautiful views.
Good morning. Yesterday ended up being an interesting day. I uh, was originally planning on camping at Unknown Pond, but when I got there, it was still kind of early and I felt pretty good. And I knew that if I camped there, I'd have a day today with 5,100 feet of elevation gain. Um, so I decided that I should make today a little easier by making yesterday a little bit more difficult and climbing up to Mount Cabot. So I filtered water at the pond, left there around, I don't know, quarter of four, I think, um, to do the extra three miles up to, up to Mount Cabot. And my plan was to stay here in the cabin, did the climb up here, and I was very disappointed to find out that there was a youth camp group occupying the entire cabin. So I got my gear ready to hike down another mile or two to find a stealth site. And then as I walked by the cabin, I saw this site right near the cabin, which is an absolutely perfect tent site. So I set up here for the night and it worked out great. I didn't have to walk the extra mileage. And actually the youth campers were a lot of fun and I hung out with them for a while and them and their counselors. And we actually had a little fire. There's a fire ring here at the cabin too. The cabin, if you haven't seen it before, it's... Uh, pretty rudimentary but you know what I would have loved to stay in it uh, I'll show you what it looks like although it's rudimentary it's luxurious for, for backpackers it's got a little picnic table to eat at the bunk room is in here it's got four double wide bunks and on a rainy night or a windy night last night was pretty windy it would be a great place to stay um, but no such luck for me but that tent site worked out okay and the fire pit's right down there. So I'm going to get going on the day. It's supposed to rain today. It's not going to be a great day. It already has sprinkled a little bit. I'm planning on camping near Mount Star King. Um, or if it's really awful, maybe I'll continue down to Jefferson. Uh, but I'm right now I'm planning on camping near Star King, near the summit. This thing's about 12 miles, and I'm guessing the elevation gain will be about, I don't know, 3,500 feet. It's still a lot. This ridge just goes up and down a lot, but a lot easier than 5,100 feet. Hello. Uh, end of the day today. It was an absolutely miserable day. It started raining about five minutes after I started walking and it rained the entire day. Just terrible. Um, so uh, my goal was to get to Mount Star King. I did make it here. It's about 11.6 miles. Uh, it was tough hiking on the Kil Kilkenny Ridge Trail, that's for sure. I did find this site in back of the chimney. And when I got here, I had cell service. So I checked the weather forecast and it wasn't supposed to rain anymore tonight. And this site isn't too bad. So I said, okay, I guess I'll set up my tent and stay here. And as soon as I finished setting up the tent, it started pouring rain. I checked the weather forecast again and checked the radar and there was a, a huge storm right over this area. So that lasted 45 minutes, absolutely pouring. Um, it just stopped a few minutes ago and I came back out here and I can't tell if it's raining now or not. It's either coming down off the trees or it's still drizzling a little bit. I don't know. But I'm here for the night, gonna make dinner, hopefully get a good night's sleep. And tomorrow, I believe it's supposed to be sunny. So I'm on my way down the Star King Trail. It's a gloomy day. I checked the weather forecast and it's supposed to be partly sunny. And I think it is starting to get a little brighter. So I'm hoping by the time I get to Jefferson, which is in about two more miles, hopefully the sun will be out. And I also hope they have egg sandwiches because I haven't eaten breakfast yet. This is a popular trail, the Star King Trail, because it leads to Mount Wombeck, one of the 4,000 footers. And I've already seen a few people on trail. In Jefferson, I'm going to the Old Corner Store, and that's where I hope to get the egg sandwich. And then I'm hoping to camp at uh, the top of Mount Martha this afternoon. Check 
check it out. Old Corner Store serves breakfast sandwiches. And two slices of pizza for lunch. Cold pizza. Only a dollar each. What a bargain. It's going to be a good day. Started Owl's Head Path a little while ago. I've got 3.2 miles left on the day, but it's almost all uphill. A difficult way to end the day, but I knew the climbing had to come in eventually. Um, so I'm going to just try to take it steady. I should have plenty of time. I hope there's a nice campsite waiting for me at the summit of Mount Martha. All right, I made it up Owl's Head. And that climb kicked my ass. That is tough. Just relentlessly uphill and steep. There's a nice view here out to the presidentials. There's Mount Washington right in the middle. Uh, it would be beautiful if the skies were less hazy, but it's still pretty nice. Mount Webster way over there on the right. So I made it to Mount Martha, um, the only one here. It's not a bad place to camp. It's kind of a small clearing at the summit, but I have an obstructed view over to the Northern Presidentials, and this is home for the night. I just left uh, the summit of Mount Martha where I camped last night. I have a pretty easy day. It should be about 13 miles. I'm aiming for some tent sites at the bottom of the Edmonds Path below Mount Eisenhower. I'm on the Cherry Mountain Trail now. I'm not sure why it's called that. I think maybe Mount Martha used to be called Cherry Mountain. I'm, I have to look that up. After about seven miles, I get to Brighton Woods and then continue the rest of the way through the Mount Washington Hotel grounds and some other crazy turns that I'm going to have to consult the map for to eventually get over to the Edmonds Path. Okay, so I'm walking through the grounds of the uh, Mount Washington Hotel golf course. The hotel is behind me right back there. I made a stop at uh, Bretton Woods Market, which was a real show to be honest. But I was able to get a nice ham and egg on a bagel sandwich, so that was good. But first of all, the registers were down, so they couldn't ring anybody up. Then they finally decided, okay, they'll take the cash customers. So I thought it said a dollar ninety-nine on it. They ring it up at four ninety-nine. I pointed out it said a dollar ninety-nine, and the lady said to the one next to her, she said, "How much are these sandwiches?" And she said three ninety-nine. And the first one said, "No, they're four ninety-nine." I paid it. So I, I end up going back in a little later to buy a sandwich for later on. And I asked for a buffalo chicken sub. And the girl at the counter, young girl, says, I don't think we can do that. I said, well, it says buffalo chicken right up on the menu right behind you. She said, yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't know how to do that. So she asked somebody else who says, I have no idea, I haven't worked here in months, so I don't know. I said, fine. 
let me just check the pre-made sandwiches here. I go pick one out. Go back up to the counter and the girl's on her phone. And she, says, she already rang it up and then she says, Oh, I could have made that buffalo chicken after all. Or whatever. I took the uh, turkey and cheddar. Then I went outside, came back in to ask for the Wi-Fi password. They had Wi-Fi there. They wouldn't give it to me. They wouldn't give me the Wi-Fi password. But they were more than happy to take take my $20 for about $8 worth of food. I ended up leaving, what, I don't know, 200 yards down the road and there's a restaurant, Fabian's restaurant. I didn't go in the restaurant, although I have had their chili before and it's good. Um, and I just checked to see if they had open Wi-Fi. And sure enough, they did. So I was able to get on the internet briefly. Uh, then I continued down the road stopped at the scenic view which has a great view of the hotel and proceeded to walk right up the driveway of the Mount Washington Hotel because that's where the trail goes. So now I'm back on the trail I exited the golf course I'm in the woods and I've got the beautiful I think it's the Amanusa River right next to me and this is a beautiful little trail here so I'm going to take this and eventually hook up with the Edmonds path in a couple more miles. All right, I made it to the Edmonds Path stealth site that I was looking for. Um, so it's good, it's right next to the river, you can probably hear it, it's easy to get water. Today ended up being a nice hike, uh, the hike down from Mount Martha is nice, and then the walk down Cherry Mountain Road is okay, um, but walking through the grounds of the Mount Washington Hotel was really cool, along the Amanusik River. The river's beautiful, uh, cascades everywhere, and um, a couple of waterfalls, that upper falls, a bunch of people were jumping off the rocks, it's probably, I don't know, 30 feet high, um, into a big pool below. And um, I was tempted to do that too, but I don't think the water was quite the same as it was in Bermuda when, when Al and I jumped off the rocks. Uh, it was a beautiful spot, but the water would be freezing cold, so I didn't do it. I think if Al were with me, though, the two of us would have done it. Um, but then continued along the river. And then in the woods, and I had a really cool wildlife sighting. Uh, I was at an intersection. I wasn't sure which way to go. I was consulting the map. And I looked down one way, and I saw an animal sticking its nose out into the trail. And I thought it was a moose with its head down low. So I stood still, went back into the, into the woods again. And then I stood there, and then it came out onto the trail. And it wasn't a moose. It was a bear. As soon as he saw me, he just turned around and hightailed it back into the woods. Um, so tomorrow it's up the Edmonds Path, and then I'll probably do the high route above tree line over to the Davis Path. It's going to be a difficult uh, route with a lot of elevation gain. All right, I'm part way up the Edmonds Path. Taking a little break here. I thought I'd show you on the map where I'm uh, where I'm headed to. All right, so here's the Edmonds Path. I camped right about here. I'm part way up here now. And when I get to the top of this, I'll be at the highest point on the Cohos Trail. And then the original route takes the Mount Eisenhower Trail down to the Dry River, and then the West Isolation Trail up to the Davis Path, and then the Davis Path all the way down to Crawford Notch, the end of the trail. But this whole area in the Dry River area got destroyed in 2011 from Hurricane Irene, so the Cohas Trail Association established an alternate high route that once you get to this high point, it continues 
over Mount Monroe or else by Mount Monroe you can do either and then around this is the Camel Trail to the Davis Path and then down the Davis Path this way this is all above tree line whereas this goes down into the valley so if the weather's good up top I plan to take the high route okay so changing plans I got up to tree line <clears throat> And the weather just kept getting worse and worse. It's all fogged in up above tree line. And I got to the warning sign. And I had cell service, so I checked the weather. I checked them on the Washington weather. It is uh, 36 degrees up there with winds up to 50 miles an hour. I was originally going to go up Eisenhower, then go up Monroe. And then the high route, like I described on the map. But I decided I'm not going up Eisenhower because that's the opposite direction. It's out of the way. So then I figured I'd just go over to Monroe. Then I decided I'd skip Monroe too and just go to the Lakes of the Clouds hut and warm up and wait for it to clear, which it's supposed to do later on. Um, but the winds were so intense. I just didn't think it was safe up there. Uh, couldn't see anything. And so uh, I decided to change plans and take the low route. And I'm on the Mount Eisenhower Trail now, which is much better because it's protected. I'm back below tree line. And it's on the opposite side of the way the wind is coming. It's on the east side of the mountains, and the wind's coming in from the west. Okay, so I reached my campsite, it's on Stairs Mountain, I have my tent set up here. Uh, it's called Stairs Mountain because it looks like a giant set of stairs. And you can see this mountain from a long way away. And when you come out on this ledge here, which has this huge drop off, because this is like the top step of the stairs. It's got just beautiful views all around. Good morning. Day 13. My last morning on trail, having breakfast at the top of Stairs Mountain. Looking out at the view, it's a nice day today. A little chilly though. Um, I'm going to be heading down the trail, which I believe goes down here and then up here. The trail goes right by. Mount Crawford, which is that one, the rocky one right there. But I think I'm going to do the side trail up here to Mount Resolution. And then I'll go back down, out to Crawford, and then down into Crawford Notch, over that way. And then, assuming I'm able to successfully complete that, I can say I completed the Cobos Trail. All right, I took the side trail up to Mount Crawford. This is the view right through Crawford Notch. And then coming around here, you have Mount Webster, Mount Jackson. This is the Southern Presidentials. Mount Pierce there in the clouds. And then the rounded one is Mount Eisenhower. And then going to the north, that's Mount Monroe. And you can't see Mount Washington again today. Still in the clouds. And then continuing a little bit, there's Stairs Mountain.
right, I'm on the home stretch now. Came down from Mount Crawford. The trail tried to kill me in there. Just rocky, treacherous footing. But got through that. I think I have less than a mile now. I can hear the streams. Sometimes I can hear the traffic. I took the side trips to Mount Resolution and Mount Crawford, which are both nice. Crawford in particular, just I've been there before, but I forgot how nice it was up there. Just beautiful views. Um, it's about noontime. I should be there in, I think, 10 minutes maybe. Um, the end of a great adventure. Mm -hmm.